Hey guys, I'm Alpha Chess. Let's get right into the video. So you clicked on this video because you want to see the Stonewall attack, and I'm here to show you how it works. I'm playing a guy named Zoomake on Lee Chess, rated 1545. Let's get into it. First move that I play in the Stonewall is D4, uh, right right out in the open. Uh, he responds with uh, D5, which is pretty standard when you get this um, Queen's Pawn opening. So the King's Indian goes as follows. You want to play E3. And then whatever he plays, you're looking to bring out your light squared bishop. You know, he, he played something to consolidate in the middle. Uh, I'm looking to develop my light squared bishop because I'm planning on castling. Uh, and I'm, I want to get this chain of pawns set up in the middle. He puts more pressure on the center. And I want to make sure that if he decides to do something like this, that I have a firm clamp on this e4 square. And I want to do all this before I bring out my f4 pawn. And now I have what's called the classic stone wall. And black hasn't done anything special here. There's some different lines that make this a little bit trickier. But if you're in the low 1500s, you're not gonna you're not gonna find any of that. People aren't gonna know what to do. They might recognize you're doing the stone wall, but they're not gonna know how to combat it. Uh, queen to e, e7. Uh, he's possibly thinking to castle queenside which would be pretty good because there's a really strong kingside attack that comes out of the stone wall. Uh, now is a good time since you've brought the pawn from f2 to f4 now is when you want to move your knight out and then you're thinking of castling. He can tell that I'm going to start castling kingside and so he starts this pawn storm and I kind of ignore it. I didn't like this move uh, on my part because it's a little premature. I think playing c3 and castling and then putting my knight in the center of the board is the way to go but it paid like i said pays out for me because we're in the 1500s he captures i capture back this way because after castling i'm going to want my rook on this semi-open file putting a lot of pressure on his king side we have g6 and now i castle and as you can see the rook's on the f file and then he continues with this little pawn storm so g5 you know, I remember at this point of the game, I wasn't quite sure if I was going to be able to handle the pre this pressure. But as you can see, I've got everything flowing this way. All my pieces are on the king side. And so, I don't, you know, if this happens to you in your games, you know, you can run into trouble. Just don't let it, uh, don't be phased by it because you have a really good position here. You have all your pieces here to defend your king. So my recommendation is when you get these pawn storms, just relax and keep playing chess. So I'll show you how I handle it. Because I, I beat this guy pretty soundly and the computer says when I analyzed the game, I was up on him the entire game. So right here, C3 is a good move because it consolidates this uh, central pawn. Like I said, this should have been played before we did the knight exchange in the middle. G4, he keeps advancing. Uh, set up this nice um, queen bishop battery. It's a little... You know, black's probably looking like he's going to castle queenside, so it's not as powerful as, as you think it would be, but it ends up being uh, really effective for me. H4, again, you know, although this is putting a lot of pressure on my king, he's also falling way behind in development. I mean, I've got three pieces out to his one, which is blocked in by his own piece, so. This rook lift is a really nice move. Um, you know, threatening to capture the g-pawn, but also just you know looking to slide over and gobble up these pawns if uh, black's not careful. Black pushes, and here I just trap these pawns. I don't want him to push any more on me. You know things like captures and scooting the king over are ideas, but I think it gives black too much activity. I'm able to pick these pawns off. He finally castles queenside, and I'm like, okay, let's go to work. So I double up on the h pawn. And this is a the first serious blunder by Black because he had it defended twice. But with this move, uh, yeah, Knight captures Pawn is free, so that's what I played. And then after he pushes it, opening an attack on the Knight, there's another really good move that White has here. You can pause the video if you want to find it. Uh, for, your, for those of you that found it, congratulations. There's a nice fork here that Black overlooked, hitting the Queen and the Rook. We have queen to h7 and knight captures on h8, taking the rook, winning the exchange after black captures back. So look at the position. Uh, what would you do here is white? Okay. 
Uh, I think that a lot of you should have noticed that this pawn is incredibly weak and that we can gang up on it. So I decided to maybe activate my dark squared bishop. Plus getting my dark squared bishop to one of these two squares would be really nice as it'll eye this long diagonal after we open up the center and move the rook around. He attacks my rook, so I have to abandon my plan or put a pause on this plan of this little uh, bishop maneuver and defend. I can also add another attacker with the rook. Queen move to defend the pawn. Uh, so this was um, curious. I didn't want to lose this pawn and give him check on the, uh, what is it, on e3. Because if I keep going with my plan, I give him this tactic here. And this infiltrates and weakens my center. Um, just something I didn't want to do. And so I decided to, to play this queen move to prepare e1. That way uh, I wasn't losing this pawn um, because black's already got a really good clamp on this. Although this pawn's weak, it's really boxing in my king. I really don't have much mobility right here. And allowing, you know, dropping a pawn right here is, even though I'm up the exchange, is still a terrible mistake and would give black some better fighting chances. We have knight to e7, and now I finally get, er, get around to putting my bishop on e1. Threatening to take the pawn. Uh, black doubles up, you know, just trying to save the pawn, but it doesn't matter because the queen's in front of the rook, so I can just capture anyways. And then at this point, I'm up four in material, so trades definitely favor me. And now that I've, uh, you know, really weakened his attack on the king side, he has no more pawns here. I'm feeling pretty safe. Uh, I didn't drop this pawn, and the queen's kind of here, oh, oh, kind of on the king's side all alone with no real attack. So my next move, b4, is I want to start putting pressure on the queen's side where the king resides. And I like this move because it opens up the queen's side, and I can get my queen over here. Um, my rook has a nice, if I can maybe open up the a or b file, my rook's going to have some nice files to play with. So we have a6, he kind of sees it coming. I open up even more on the queen side with a4. Queen e8, you know, I mean, he's going after this pawn. But after this move, uh, black has to make a decision here because you have to be careful. You can't just capture, I mean, you can make the argument I have one, two, three attackers to two defenders, right? But it doesn't work out for black because if you capture the pawn, which he did in the game, it leads to some, you know, nasty back rank mate. And he unfortunately he sees this instead of going for, you know, captures checkmate or moving the king. He he I think the move right here is to capture, but he sees this potential checkmate threat and I think just panics because he plays a terrible move. He plays uh B six and yeah, this is an easy win for White, which I take advantage of. Capturing the queen, and after recapturing the rook, this game is is pretty much won. So we'll kind of fly through the rest of this. And then we'll maybe talk about why my position was so superior the entire game. So looking to trade, he ignores it. Keeping an eye on this pawn in the middle, he moves back. I now threaten it with the queen. He moves again, put him in check. Break open the center. And yeah, this is just crushing. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm up a queen. There's nothing that black can do in this position. So after opening up the center with these couple pawn moves, Finally getting my bishop into the game, I'm able to enact checkmate. I mean, yeah, black's just falling apart. So looking back at this game, um, you know, I'm not a huge fan of these queen pawn openings. I've, I've played a lot of the London opening, which is a similar theory, but it involves getting the dark squared bishop out a little bit sooner and then pushing e3. But I really like this stonewall because ultimately what you want to do is you're going to want to do this rook lift, and if he castles kingside, which most players do at 1500 rating, you're just going to have this nice attack with all your pieces flowing this way. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be making more videos on this stonewall attack because I have really been enjoying it in my games lately, and I've been climbing. I'm almost at 1550, so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you're new to the channel, subscribe and turn notifications on because I create informative chess content to better your understanding of chess and better your play. So. Glad to have you all here and we'll see you in the next video.